Hello guys, I'm back again. We're going to try to do a tutorial again, but this time I want to show you this book, like I promised. It's by um, Carrie Gamow's Drawing Monsters and Heroes for Film and Comics. And uh, I did a video on this, but that didn't come out so good because I was moving the camera around a lot. So this time, hopefully, since I have the camera holder, uh, I'll be able to do this better. So. So bear with me, I'm going to show you uh, page by page what a talented artist, uh, illustrator this guy is. I mean, this guy can draw phenomenal. And there's some stuff here by Steve Johnson. He's also a writer and a comic book uh, artist also. And it's I'm not going to tell you this. This is sort of like a how to draw book. This is mostly kind of like info about comics and uh, how he does his drawings, but it's pretty much um, all his artwork that he's done. So I'm going to show you. Let me move this out of the way. This is all, it's in the way here, so okay. Um, it has, you know, it's a lot of reading, pretty much of his history. So you're going to see a lot of cool drawings here. He did stuff for a creepy magazine. These are comic books that he worked on. So we're gonna go page by page and then maybe if I have time and enough storage, I will do a tutorial on figure drawing again and uh, faces and heads. He did a lot of great artwork. This is an awesome drawing of Spider-Man and Wolverine. Indiana Jones. These are the gestures that he does. And that's pretty much what I've been showing you. And I did this right here. But this is sort of like what I've been showing you before, that you work with the, uh, the center of the body and you do the, um, the cone shapes. And that kind of reminds me of uh, David Finch uh, method, which uh, let me show you a demonstration on that. some paper and I'll give you a quick demonstration how he did that. I'm going to try to do it in pencil and in pen because usually um, pencil especially um, you won't be able to see the details that much so I'm going to do my best to do it in ink. I got to get the good pens here and then we'll start. Start. We'll do it maybe in red pencil. I don't know yet. Let's see what happens. Let's see how it goes. Luckily, I came early. I'm in a break room right now. So I start like in a, probably, possibly an hour. So. Okay, I got these pencils. Okay. All right. So the way he did this right here is sort of like a gesture, but kind of like um, a half-finished uh, body uh, gesture. So my greatest guess that he would probably start off doing the shape of the body, and I've seen this done by um, 
Jim Lee. Jim Lee works like this sometimes. And then you can tell that if you look at this, it's sort of like cone shapes. So if you want, you could do like I did before, lines, the form, cone shape forms, the lines. After you do the joint, the lines, cone shapes. But when you're doing the cone shapes, make sure you're actually getting that form of the leg. And then right here, cone shapes again. Again, the cone, uh, the, sorry, the, um, the joint, cone, the uh, line, and then the cone shapes. So you're giving it form, uh, these cone shapes, you see? And it kind of looks a little bit like this. So, um, the same thing with the arms, you could use uh, cone shapes, like that, see? It's sort of like you were doing, it's, it's kind of like stick figuring, a stick figuring, but cone shapes. So it looks a little bit like this pose right here. And then, like always, I always leave the head for last. Always. Neck. So now I can start, you know, after I do the... Let me see something. Hold on. Sharpener. I don't know what happened to my other pencil. Okay, this one. Here it is. Okay, so now I can start, you know, you know adding the details. I'm going to do pretty much what he did. I'll start from the top of his body. It's like you're going over the body with small details of outlines, outlining the contour of, you know, the core of his body the torso, the pelvic, the crotch area. And then right here, you can see, if you look at this really good, it's got sort of like curves on his legs. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got shape. So even though you have the cone shapes, but you still got to add more, you know, more uh, shape uh, to the body, see? The kneecap, even though that's not a perfect kneecap, but I could, you know, try to figure out how to do it better. And of course, you know, this is just a quick gesture. You can tell that the leg is not perfect, but you know, you can always uh, do it better yourself, you know. Right here, right here. And here's the abdominals and the stomach area. The belly buttons, I, I think it's around here in the center. And the face. So it's very simple. You just start off with, you know, the basic core of the body, like that. And then you do cone shapes. Like that, just like I showed you. Just go back on the video and just observe the way I did it. All right, going back to the book. So um, he's very good doing a lot of poses here. And uh, pretty much like I explained to you guys that if you want, you can either start with the guy that's giving the impact or the guy that's taking the impact. And you can see there's a great uh, composition here, especially the foreshortening here. And um, at the same time, the foreground looks pretty good and then the middle ground, and then you have the background of the area back here. This is a great, great drawing of uh, foreshortening. And I'm not gonna draw the whole drawing, but I'm gonna give you an idea how you would probably do this. So let's um, focus on that. So the way I would probably do this, the foreshortening and the perspective, I would probably, um, once I have the shape of the torso, I will begin with the um, the shoulder and then right around here, the hand. And I make it kind of like really facing at me. Here's the fingers. His fingers, the, the pinkies a little bit for like kind of like back a little bit. And then the thumb. 
but you can tell that that is not a perfect hand, you know. Some of these comic book artists can't draw perfect, perfect hands. But at long, you know, as long as it look like a hand, you know, and try to make it look like a hand, you know, that's what's really important, guys. That you make it look like a hand. And then the hand is foreshortened at the same time. You get to do all this back here. So you're actually drawing from back to the shoulder. So that's what we're doing, see? Draw back. All the way to the shoulder, see? It's like you could add circles or cylinder, yeah, cylinders or just oval shapes, just to get that form. Always start from the shoulder the hand and then you work your way back okay especially when you're doing um foreshortening especially if the like you're seeing a hand going straight at you like that you know you could actually do the the shoulder then the hand more forward perspective you know like that see so it looks more bigger right in front of the uh, viewer's eye like that see so you could do it like that it's always important to learn how to do foreshortening and perspective. Okay, so let's go on with the next page. These are, you know, studies that he's done, life drawing, because he added a lot of stuff here. He did, he actually, this is me, I drew over the book. I should have never done that, but yeah, I did that. But nothing messy, it's just, you know, figuring how he did the body and all that. So this is a comic book page that he did, the Teen Titans. Very uh, popular with the Teen Titans, this guy. You can tell this got a lot of power. And it's very important to draw a lot of power in your figure drawing. You can see the arm is really strong. He's holding the weapon, sort of like for shortening. There's a lot of dynamic stuff happening here. Here we have Superman. No, no, that's not Superman. That's somebody else. It's just a different character he did. Great expressions on faces, even though, the, you know, the proportions are not perfect, but it's actually uh, sort of like, a, I would say, uh, Neil Adams style drawing, because he draws a lot like Neil Adams uh, Gamel, a lot like Neil Adams. And this Batman, great drawing of Batman. Excellent uh, sketch here with inking. Superman. Now here's Superman right here. Great drawing of Superman. Even though this is just a rough sketch, but you can tell that it's got power. You know, the muscles, the chest, the, the biceps. Everything has power, the legs. So, you know, Gamel, Carrie Gamel actually reminds me of Neil Adams and a little bit of John Buscema. And maybe John Romita Jr. You could see that this is a very good composition here. This is sort of like you're looking down at the people. And this is sort of like a, a bird's eye view. And it's really cool. You have the cross, very perspective here. You know, my greatest guess that he started the uh, horizontal line here, then he did the perspective going up in order to get this whole segment here. Very cool. Great impact of Spider-Man crushing into the monster's body. Very good. I like the way he did that. Great detailing on the face. We have some X-Man stuff. And this is sort of like a gesture that he actually used. Pretty much what I explained to you. You can see right here, he does more like a cone shape. And then right here, it's sort of like a V shape, the crotch area right here where the pelvic area is. And then right here, sort of like a, um, an oval shape that he did here. I don't know if you can notice that, but let me bring it a little bit closer so you guys can see that. It's sort of like an oval shape, see? This camera's not really getting all the, uh, 
Maybe if I move it back. Okay, now you can see it better. Let's see. He has a great pose of Spider-Man. And uh, he did almost like the same thing that you see here with his creature. He did it right here. You can tell the same pose. So if I were to do something like that, let me get another free page here. I would probably do something kind of like that. So let's, I would start with the upper body. And then I would start with the lower body. Then I do sort of like a bean shape and the pelvic, like that. Then I do the leg, cone, sh sorry, the, the line, cone shape, the line. And instead of the cone shape, I will probably do, since this is sort of like for shortening, I will probably use a oval shape. With feet and and then the head. This arm would go back. And then of course, you can see that the hand is sort of like foreshortened right here and the arm is coming in towards the shoulder right here so what do we do we start here first and then we'll do the hand over here and then we just bring back like that so, and we give it another shape here for the upper part of the muscle here so it looks a little bit like the pose and since his head is facing down we want to capture that so like that So I'm just gonna do a, a quick sketch gesture. I'm not gonna finish any details. I just wanna give you an idea how it's done, especially when you're doing this type of pose. So the, more, the, the most important thing is to capture the pose. The foot. And you could do that center line, sort of like the um, the grid line in the body. So, because the body has grid lines in a way, especially when you're doing different positions and poses. All right, going to the next page. Um, this guy did a lot of stuff for toys. You know, he did a lot of cool stuff for toys. He did sort of like the design. There's actually a lot of comic book artists actually do, you know, designs for toys. This looks like a key ring with a big eye here. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, these are all toys. Very cool sketches that he did. So, you know, being a comic book artist, I would get that I would guess that there was there is a lot of opportunities in designing either games and toys. So if you are starting out, I would guess, unfortunately, I don't have that chance, but for you guys and many of you young artists out there, if you ever do get a chance, get a chance in everything. I mean, that's what really gives you a lot of popular, you know, popular, make you more popular. Uh, making games, drawings for games, and drawings for toys, too. You can tell this is sort of like a, a figurine thing that he did. Give me a minute, guys. So yeah, um, you could tell the, the front of the toy here, which is the thing, and then the back side. So he, when you're designing toys, make sure you're doing the back side, either the front side and the back side. And if you can, you could do the side, the sideways too. See, there's two different positions here. And that's just only a toy. You're just designing a toy or a model for a toy. Uh, breaking into films. You know, you're doing characters for films. And we saw this in the other video, which on the other book, the Frankenstein drawings. These are all his, you know, creations that he's done. This is all made by Gamel. A 
very very creative and this also it looks really cool very creative very cool stuff these are more like aliens and I gotta admit uh, Kerry Gamble um, has a great imagination drawing aliens I love this right here that is really creative Here's a three-quarter view. I think this is the Elephant Man. And this is the original devil character. But, you know, the devil to me is like a myth. So. Fantastic drawing. Look at the details on that. He is a great artist. Fantastic artist. We got the front view here and the three quarter view. So when you're doing design on monsters, make sure you draw them. Say you create a character, like maybe you created this character. So you draw this character either sideways, you know, three quarter view, uh, profile of the character. So that way you're giving an idea, especially for movies, because you the movie directors, they want to see a little bit of every type of uh, form of your character. And I guess that's how they did um, you know, characters from Star Wars or anything, Star Trek or any type of, maybe Lord of the Rings also, you know. So, yeah, when you're doing characters, you got to make sure you draw them different positions and different poses. Body-wise, face-wise. Here we have storyboarding. And storyboarding is done for films, just like I explained in the other video, the video before this one. He does excellent storyboarding. You read the script, the story of the movie, and then you draw it. So you're giving the director an idea of how the movie's gonna look. Even though it might look cartoonish or comic book, but you're, the uh, director is going to love your idea, especially when you're doing storyboarding. And these are done for movies, animation, it could be anything. Really cool, cool, cool stuff here. I mean, this is like an excellent drawing of an alien. Kind of looks like the movie Alien. And the, the, the cool thing about this is that you, when you create a character and uh, the director loves your character, they actually start molding your character into like a mask. So, you know, they could wear big arms or, or the face and stuff like that. So that's what's really interesting about movie making and stuff. So, you know, when you're creating character, whether it's a Hollywood or maybe those low budget movies, whatever. This would be very cool for a movie. When I was in New York, the problem is that I went through so much stuff, a, a lot of things in New York, you know, I was living on my own. Uh, you know, living wasn't easy, you know, and uh, sometimes I, I, there were times I, I was living in the streets and I lost a lot of artwork, a lot of great artwork that I, because not only I did superheroes out of my head, but I did, you know, monsters and creatures, you know, all kinds of creatures I came up with. I lost, I wish I could, you know, actually remember every single detail 
or go back through time and figure out how I did those characters. Uh, but yeah, I used to do a lot of, I mean, I could do it again, but it would just, it would be hard to remember pretty much what I've done way, way back. I guess my, my stuff now is just, you know, drawing stuff that looks like Andrew Loomis faces. So right now I'm into more like drawing, you know, figure drawing faces, heads and, um, but I, I used to do stuff like this, you know? Not perfect like this, but I, I would come out with some cool ideas. And I was like way, way, way back when I was younger. There's the Hulk. Great, great drawing of the Incredible Hulk. That is cool. Like every year, out of all the books that I have, very, very, uh, it's rare. It's like I can't explain it. There are like maybe every year I would just look at every book that I have. You know what I mean? And it's not like I look at it every day or every two months or every three months. It's like every year. You know what I mean? So it's kind of uh, weird. I know a lot of people are going to find that strange that I have all, all these books and but it's just, you know, like I said, I don't have time for myself anymore. Everything is just work, 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 work. And the only thing I could do now is just do, you know, short tutorials whenever I can. But I love, I would love to draw stuff like this, you know, and with more details. This is excellent artwork. You really got to have a lot of time for yourself to draw stuff like this. You can tell that the uh, this figure he created it sort of like a skeleton technique. That is awesome. My greatest guess when he did this pretty much like explained um, this. Let me do this one. The center for the feet. The I call it the. Bo the body core, torso, the center, the bone structure, and then he did a sort of like a pelvic, like that. Sort of like a uh, sort of like a, a pelvic bone, like that, and then some joints. So, so this is sort of like a zombie character that he did. So using the skeletal method actually helps you form your your you know your figure drawing a little bit more better because the bone structure actually helps you see the shapes of the legs and the body structure, you know? So if you want, you could do, use the, uh, the skeleton method. Let me see. Okay, so then after that, you add some flesh, just a little bit. Don't exaggerate too much because this is sort of like a zombie skeleton guy. You want to make him look very gory like. You can scribble some parts of the muscle, you know. Scribble a little bit meat over here because he is sort of like skinless skeleton. You could, you know, do the details on the ribs. And, you know, the, the good thing about scribbling that with scribbling will actually help you see shapes. So, yeah, you can tell he did a lot of uh, cylinders over here, see? You could do that too, cylinders. But I'd rather just use um, loose lines and uh, scribbling at the same time in order to get my character done. 
And of course, the head. The skeleton shape head, a skull. It's an evil skeleton dude. All right, so pretty much that, I think that's the way he did it. So let's go on with the book. We got some more cool faces here. This is really cool. I like the way he did that. Look at this. This is amazing, phenomenal. This is incredible. I think that's from a movie. I'm not really sure. This character here. Some of this stuff look very uh, similar to these science fiction movies. Props, pop, uh, yeah, props, puppets, and things. Pretty cool stuff here. That is really creative. Look at that. That's really cool. You know? But everything, if you notice that, everything has to do with shapes. It's like sort of like a big oval here, and you know, you do lines for the legs, and then little by little, you start constructing and forming shapes. I would guess he did two lines going down this way to in order to get this weird looking tendons, I think it is. I'm not really sure. That's what it looks like. This is really creative right here. See, this is really cool. So it's everything basically has to do with shapes, you know? There's an eye right here. Really cool stuff. This is sort of like a humanoid, some type of parasite or something that goes inside into the human body and turns you into an alien. This is awesome. Like a baby alien. And you got the big head here. Look at the details he did on this. This is awesome. This is phenomenal. So I guess he started sort of like the gesture of the, like that, of the body and then he started doing an oval for the head. And that's the way I actually would see it if I were to do something like this or copy it. If I were to copy this, I would just start with a gesture line, a curve, sort of like an S, like that. Then I do a big oval here for the whole head. And then I wouldn't work on the details yet. I would just do, and that's the thing, a lot of people like to work. And sometimes I've seen a lot of artists when they do drawings of figures or faces, they don't use shapes or construction. And that's why sometimes their drawings don't come out right. You must learn to use forms, gestures, you know, oval shapes to get the form of the body. Like this, you can tell this is sort of like a big, um, I would say a C, this is like a C. And then you do sort of like a bean shape, cone shapes here, cone shapes for the arms, and a big uh, oval for the head. You know, if you were to copy this, you make the oval for the head, but you kind of like make it slanted, tapering in, you know. That's the same thing over here. This is sort of like an oval, like a, a potato shape. It's like a potato shape. And then you have a sort of like maybe a triangle shape, a three-dimensional triangle shape here. Joints, joints over here, joints over here joints over here. And remember that when you're drawing figure drawing or anything that you're doing, you can do, if I were to do something like this, I could do it this way. For example, I could, um, let's do this a little, <coughs> excuse me, quick. So, you know, I would probably do a potato shape or something like that. And then, um, a triangle shape for that part of the face that he has. It's a very strange, unusual face he has. <coughs> Excuse me. And a joint over here. And then another joint here for the bottom part of the leg here. And then a joint here. Uh, you could do also ovals, starting from where the leg joint. Uh, ovals, like that. Just, you know, do everything lightly. And then do, um, you know, the feet like this right here. And then connect it. So that way your figures start um, taking form. So it's going to look a little bit like this, you know. So after that, you know, oops, let me get this out of the way. All right, so, yeah, after that, you start forming the... Uh, 
the shape of the legs and you got the oval there you have the cone shape for the arm here and then you got um, the leg here and the feet this leg goes it's more it's more on the back side right here right here we have the shape and the buttocks he has sort of like a point for the buttocks and then the eyes are coming out this way so pretty much what I did here is pretty much what you see here so everything has to do with shapes 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 this was also a shape so he there's probably maybe uh, sort of like an S shape here in the center you start the center and then you work your way with doing the form you know an oval shape now if I were to do something like this I would probably do it um, kind of like this I would start with the S shape like that and do work with the top first for that upper part of the body and then do another sort of like a cylinder shape a curvy all the way down and then all the way down and then at the same time I will visualize cylinders that's going to actually help me do it more three-dimensional like and this part is coming at us you know kind of this is like foreshortening over here you can see it's sort of like a curve over here see it's like a curve here right there so yeah you get all that little by little you know you know don't rush your work you know just take your time when you're drawing like that and uh then you start adding you know all these other tendons all these arms wiggly arms coming out of the creature you know i don't know what they're called i think they're tendons or just wiggly arms whatever you want to call it anyway here's another like sort of like a creature right here this is really cool this is really creative this is sort of like a snake the uh, bottom part of the snake and the top part of the snake of course this is sort of like a different design here that he did and I love the way he did the, oh my God, the face of the snake. These big teeth over here, that is really phenomenal. It's like really creative. I love the way he did that. This over here is a whole bunch of bodies all together, all crushed in, in, in a bottle, like, I don't know, not in a bottle, I would say more like a cylinder kind of. So he's got all these bodies. It's kind of like souls inside of a, this vein, I don't know, it's, you know probably a, 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 some type of evil dimension or something. And, you know, of course, you got to be really creative doing all this stuff. This is really cool right here. I like this awesome stuff. This is awesome. It's sort of like a mechanical creature with a big, long tube mechanical head or something. It looks like a tube. Yeah, like a tube. And then you got the head over here. Really cool. This is a creature. This is sort of like a superhero creature. This is really awesome the way he did that. Look at the way he did this one right here. You know, everything has to do with shapes. This is really cool the way he did this. My greatest guess, when he did that, let me get another piece of paper here. Hold on. Hold on for a minute. Let me get another, because I want to do this one. Okay, in order to, if I were to do something like this, and this is really off the wall character here. So I would probably start off with, you know, the body of 
the character. So first, like a regular anatomy, I will start off with a regular anatomy. Work with the core first. Then notice that the body is really big on the top side. So I have to capture that. So here's the torso right here, right? So the arms, you know, I probably might gonna have to do the face over here, the head, and then the shoulders are really big. So I'm gonna do like a hint of the shoulders Cone shapes if I want, you know. Remember what I said that you could do the line and do the form. The same thing here with the leg, do the line, the form, the line, the form, joint, line, form. You know, you, it's like you're working little by little. And trust me, this really works. Your proportions are gonna come out really good because you're not doing like some artists would just go line like that, a line like this, no. You're working slowly with the lines and the gestures. Okay, so now in order to get this whole form here, I would probably do it, um, try to make the shape, and he's got like sort of like a curve, kind of, and a big lump on top. So all I gotta do in order to get that this whole effect here is you he, sorry, erase this shoulder line here and a little bit over here, erase over here also. So it'll look a little bit like this drawing a little bit, see? So there you go, see? And then now you could, um, you know, finish a little bit the face. He's opening his mouth here. He's really angry. It's sort of like an alien creature or something. And then we add muscles, the, um, the chest area here. And there's a lot of uh, details around the head, so you always gotta capture that. Now, this is not gonna come out perfect, so I'm just giving you an idea, because this is the thing, you gotta really take your time when you're doing these kind of drawings. Especially, you know, stuff that you're not really uh, familiar with. You know, you gotta you know, really take your time doing all this stuff, so. Uh, okay, right here is the crotch area right here. And then we add more muscles. More muscles over here. More details. And if you notice that, this is sort of like a mechanical arm he has. So what you got to do in order to get that effect, you do a big uh, cylinder. And then you shape it into that same drawing that you see. Sort of like a cylinder, but very tapered in cylinder, kind of, see? It's a very tapered in cylinder. So you want to really capture that. And the hands are all the way down, as you can see from the kneecap. So the hand is kind of like this, you know, you can scribble in the hands. The, this part has a cylinder, so he doesn't have a hand over here, so. So it looks a little bit like it, because the thing is, when I, when I do um, a sketch, I really got to take my time, especially something that I never did before. So I, this is just a quick sketch that I'm doing here. muscles so little by little you know you'll get the idea all right so let's go on with the next page we're almost finished 
this is an awesome drawing. And if I were to do something like this, of course, I would use a little bit of the Loomis method. But then again, I got to remember the eye is only one eye here, see? So this, let me see if I can probably do this. So just to show you guys. So let's pick a good method here on my do-it-yourself how to draw book that I did. So let's pick a good, good technique for this. Let's think here before we go on, before we go ahead of our time here. These are all techniques and methods that I got down. I gotta show you this technique. Maybe I'll do it after I do the face. Okay, I think I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to use this technique. This is the Serpino technique. I think it's the Serpino technique. Yeah, it is. Okay, so in order to do a face like this, now I gotta pay attention to, I analyze it first. You know, I look at the center line is here and the horizontal line, the eyebrow line would be around here. But if this is sort of like a, a little, the, you know, the proportions are a little bit different here. So I gotta be very, very careful when I do this because usually the Loomis method, you know, the, the uh, eyebrow line would be around here. So let's see, let's, let's give this one a shot. If not, you can put me a uh, thumbs down. Okay, so let's try using the Loomis method doing this. And then maybe we'll do it the oval uh, method also. We could actually use the oval method. Okay, so the center line would be right a little bit in the center, not usually over here, but right here. The... Uh, All right, we'll do the eye line here. Okay, that's what we'll do. Then the nose line will be right here. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit like the Loomis method. Then the chin, he's got a, a big uh, mouth right here. So, so in order for me to capture that, I just gotta make the chin here. And uh, what's the, my next move here? I'm going to do the nose, like that, the nostrils. Always start with the nose. And then you can slice this part of the head afterwards. Okay, now I'm going to start with the nose, then I'm going to work with the mouth. But before I do the mouth, I want to capture the planes of this over here. That's actually going to help me uh, form the whole mouth. So I'm going to do that. That's my next move. And then the mouth, you know, kind of like scribble it in or just um, render it, you know, lightly, ghost image. Use the ghost image. Okay, so now I go back up. But before I do the eye, I want to capture the, the shape of the head. So like always, when you're, when you're looking at a head, it's not totally round. There's a slice part. The shape of the head tapers out like this. It's kind of like a slice. You're slicing off a bit. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying here. So then I do the cheekbone right here, all the way down, and then do the jaw straight down to where the chin is right there. Then after that, I start working with the other side of the jaw here. straight down to where the chin is. So now I could start working with the eyes. So in order to capture this type of eye, I would do a big, big oval, but that's not the eye. That oval is gonna help me construct the eyebrow. And then right here, kind of like if I were drawing a lip, and right here is where I do the eye. See? I don't know if I did this right, but it's almost there. Then add more hair on the eyebrow, like you see in the drawing. And of course, it's shading. And while I'm doing this, I'm shading at the same time, you know? So it helps me improve the drawing a little better. So 
I got the idea of it, you know. So now I gotta work with the top of the head. So I'm gonna work with the top of the head. Let me see. Uh, he has this big lump right here. And then back of the neck is kind of big. So this is sort of like a very big uh, mutant monster, one eye creature, but that's what it is. And then now I could work with the planes of the face, the cheekbones right here, more details on the face and work more with the mouth. I think I gotta sharpen this. This whole, I'm gonna take this out. This is not really comfortable to use. Some people actually use this to hold a pencil, but I, I think it's a bad idea. So I might use it for maybe colored pencils better. All right, so then we add the teeth. Do the shapes of the nostrils on top of the nostrils to give it form. And then I have to erase some of this circle here because then I'll really mess up the drawing and some of the construction lines I have to erase. And shade in just bottom of the nose here, bottom of the lips. And he's got a lot of veins, a lot of uh, creases on his neck. I don't know what they're called, but it's actually creases. They, I, I would say more like the age spots, the age lines. But then again, he is a creature, so you just never know what that is. So, so this not may not look, you know, it might look a little bit like it, but not too much. But since I love drawing fantasy stuff, so, you know, I think it might come out like the creature itself. And then we'll draw the eye just a little bit bigger. And we'll do the, the shape of the iris and the pupil. So yeah, it looks a little bit like it, you know. This is way, way better, of course, but I guess when you practice, it will come out good, okay? So everything has to do with practice. Okay, guys, that's about it. These are all his comic books right here. If you guys are interested, look him up. He's very good. This is the artist, um, Carrie Gamble, drawing monsters and heroes for film and comics. Okay, guys, good luck with your artwork and never give up. Keep drawing, drawing, practice, and remember, don't let nobody put you down with your artwork.